What's up YouTube? Welcome to another exciting personal finance video where I'm talking about things like gold and silver, stocks, real estate, all sorts of personal finance strategies. Guys, if you're into that stuff, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. Guys, quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, so please do your own research before doing anything like buying things like gold and silver, any of the stocks that I mentioned, or financial strategies. You know, everybody's situation is different, so go do your own research uh, before making any sort of financial uh, decisions. My videos are basically entertainment only, so hope you guys enjoy this one. Okay, guys, uh, first off, I just want to say thanks so much for the positive vibes, the great responses there from my last video where I'm talking about just pursuing like a laser focus on paying my mortgage off this year and next. Um, it's something I've been thinking about for a while. I really appreciate all the feedback, guys. Thanks so much for your support. Um, I'd like to just talk about uh, something I mentioned in my past few videos that I picked up another gold uh, maple. So I hadn't planned it as I said I did the video and we're talking about this one here. I bought it in a slab form, uh, a mint first from Kitco. It's okay, it's cool, it's whatever. I don't really care to have slabs because they're big and bulky, cumbersome. They don't fit in a little tube like these nice little uh, uh, round capsules and stuff, these air tights. So um, yeah, anyway, uh, what can I say, man? Uh, gold's been pretty like beat up the past I don't know since since Christmas I mean it went up for a bit but it had, it's had I feel like it's had more down days than up and uh, with everything that's going on I just thought hey you know what I'm gonna pick up another ounce I wanted to hit uh, 10 ounces last year um, I think I ended up with eight at the end of it so what's it eight actually seven yeah so I'm gonna try to try for another three ounces this year but here it is I already did the unboxing just kind of off camera, I guess. And I put it in one of these airtight capsules. Uh, as you see at the bottom, it is a 2021. Again, the Royal Canadian Mint Maple, Gold Maples are just such beautiful coins. I just, I find like they're just really a cool coin to look at. It's 4.9 fine, 24 karat fine gold. Um, has the radio lines. It has... Um, uh, the bullion DNA, so inside that smaller maple leaf, you can scan it. Uh, it verifies um, digitally, you know, the authenticity of the coin and stuff like that. Just really, just cool features to have. Um, Royal Canadian Mint, you know, they always make really cool products. I really like that. So I got another maple. I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm, I, I might try to pick up another one of these buffaloes. I like the 20, I like 24 karat gold, so I don't collect... Um, you know, the American Gold Eagle and stuff like that. Crew Grand, unless it's, I don't know if they make Crew Grand 24 karat, but anyway, um, so that's why, that's that's what I like to, I guess, stack, I guess. I guess I'm sort of turning into a bit of a stacker now, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I, I buy this, I, was, I'm, I guess I'm an investor first, and um, I have, what got me into all this stuff was basically my coin collection. Um, I have a, pretty extensive coin collection it's not you know humongous or super valuable but i do get a lot of coins and i've collected them all my life so i guess i just always understood uh the intrinsic value of you know precious metals uh, a lot of the old coinage was silver and uh and and uh to a lesser extent gold so i've always been comfortable holding these things and um you know, I understand the value of it at the end of the day. I'm not sure all the, a lot of other people do, um, which is probably why I don't have problems stacking pure gold and silver coins like I've been doing the past, I don't know, year, I guess. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about that for a second because I guess maybe if you're new to buying uh, gold or silver bullion, um, I don't, I don't see a lot of videos talking about this. I'm sure there's some out there on YouTube. I never came across any. I never really thought about it. But I just thought about, you know, what would hold a person back maybe from buying a, like a physical piece of, of gold, a one ounce gold coin? Obviously, like price, okay, that might be, you know, if gold's at $18.54, um, you know, the that's, by the way, a paper price. I want to talk about that too in a second. Um but maybe, you know, this is, uh, I don't know, 2000 or 1950 or whatever. That's a lot of money. But assuming you have the money, uh, you know, silver is not like way cheaper than gold. So, you know, 
assuming you had the money, what might stop somebody from buying that? If you knew nothing about the metals, if you knew nothing about coins or the market. Um, well, this is one thing that I always talk about. And it's kind of a subtle thing, but I do feel like there's some, something behind it. It's um, number one, uh, gold and silver, the prices that you see quoted, um, that's not the real price of a physical piece of gold and silver. That is a uh, quote on the paper price. That's uh, futures, contracts, and stuff like that. So, and I, I've seen a lot of um, really smart um, gold and silver guys talk about this stuff. Um, what they're basically saying is that, you know, for every one physical ounce of gold, there may be as many as at least a hundred, or maybe even more paper contracts laying claim to this one ounce, whether it's short sellers or, you know, people going long, whatever. Um, that to me is just astonishing. I mean, it happens in, in like in the stock market with, uh, with, with the options and stuff like that. But just think about that uh, for a second. You know, the, the paper price dictates the price of the physical, but the paper can, can be, you know, uh, the ratio of paper to actual physical gold and silver is, you know, at least 100 to 1. That gives the illusion that, you know, something that is truly scarce, like physical gold and silver, is actually abundant and cheap and plentiful. And it really does sort of cheapen uh, the value that people place on these metals. We don't really know the true value of gold and silver. Um, you know, people guess. Um, but when you're in like a manipulated market, um, you know, the, the big banks and you know, uh, we don't know. I don't know who's behind it. Some people say maybe it's the Fed and the government trying to trying to defend the dollar. Um, and they're using these banks and even the bullion banks to try to uh, suppress the price of gold and silver. Maybe it is that these banks are just short and they're getting caught and they're trying to smash the price to do short covering and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. But what I find just astonishing is that, um, you know, a lot of people think this is probably not a great investment or, or a good hedge because the price, you know, is dictated by these paper markets. But as we saw last year, um, on the, on the Comex, you know, there is a lot of stress, um, with deliveries. Um, when you have one of those contracts and if you hold it and, uh, and you stand for delivery, um, the Comex has struggled to to meet delivery on these things last year and you know they say it was because of covid but they also did something really really interesting they they came out with a whole new list of acceptable gold and silver bars or maybe it was just gold bars i can't remember um so anyways that just kind of some food for thought there right um as just the average guy buying gold and silver if you just look at the price, you, most people don't understand. They're like, "Hey, uh, gold is 1850. Why would I pay, you know, 1900, 1950 to own a physical ounce? You know, that's it's not worth that." That's what people think and that's what people say. And of course, it doesn't help that when you go and try to sell your gold and silver, you're going to get spot. And maybe a small premium depending on, you know, the condition or the type of coin that you have. Um but that to me is uh, you know, turns a lot of people off frankly from from this thing but that again like that is um it's it's deceiving to think like that and um and as i just said you know when you think about it there's a hundred pieces of paper laying claim to this one ounce of gold um i mean that's why that's why all the big gold guys say you know if you don't hold it you don't own it um, GLD owning it through ETFs and, and, and all these products, um, you know, it doesn't, uh, you, you think you own gold, but the reason why people own gold, um, as, as security, as a hedge, you know, uh, when you own it in paper form, it doesn't really provide that security. It gives the illusion of security because as I just mentioned, you know, it's, you know, you think you own gold, but you don't. Um, so this big reason why I prefer to hold mine in physical form. It's not an investment to me. This is a head.
All right, guys, so that's all I have for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, check out my website, my road to wealth and freedom, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick myself up a buffalo sometime. Premiums are still pretty high for this, even compared to the maple, but I guess one or the other, I'll pick up another one uh, eventually. Anyways, guys, stay tuned. Thanks.